My name is John Marfal. Today we're going to cover the assembly of a hydraulic hose. The tools required will be a vernier gauge, clean oil, access to an air supply, a white marker and safety glasses. The components will be the correct hose with two ferrules and two inserts. The specification of the hose should be decided using information such as the working pressure and media used. Also bearing in mind other factors such as pulsation, the working environment the hose will be used in and any movement. All of these can affect what type of hose should be used and if any protective sleeving or covers should also be fitted to increase the life expectancy. All the parts to be used in the construction of the hose should be from the same manufacturer as all use different machine intolerances when making the parts. Mixing these could cause a premature failure and would invalidate any warranty given by the manufacturer. Once you've selected the right hose and fittings for the, for the assembly, we'll begin. Using the fittings you required will help work out the hose cut length. Measure the fittings from the ceiling cone to the locking collet for the ferrule, allowing a small amount for expansion. Try to ensure that you have a measuring trough or a flat surface to lay the hose prior to cutting. This will get a far straighter cut essential for allowing a good interface between the hydraulic insert, ferrule and hose. For safety and protection, wear safety glasses during this procedure. Before you continue, make sure you remove any contamination by using an airline in and around the cut in the hose. By marking a white line in the position where the ferrule will be situated, this will help ensure that when coupled together, the ferrule's movement can be monitored. You may also want to use a small amount of clean oil to help you push the fitting into the hose, as these can often be extremely tight. Make sure that the fitting is positioned correctly and that any interlocking parts have a correct pathway to each other. This will stop the fitting from pushing out when swaging and also keep the fitting sealed under pressure. Should you be using angled connections on both ends of the hose, check the orientation of the fittings. Sometimes known as clocking, the normal procedure for this is to have the end furthest away from you at zero degrees or 12 o'clock and then angle the fitting closest to you into the required position. This can help when fitting the hose and will guard against twisting the assembly which then decreases its life expectancy. Select the appropriate swage dimension using the swage chart provided by the hose manufacturer making sure that all the parts match. Correct ferrule as sometimes there may be a choice depending on the manufacturer. This should also be indicated on the swage chart. Now you can set the swage according to these details. You should have an OD finish size that the manufacturer has specified and set the micrometer on the machine in line with the manufacturer's recommendations. You will then need to select the closest set of dies down from that size. Here you can see us removing the size 20 dies from the machine and then insert in the 24 dies that are required for the hose we are currently making. Make sure that all the dies are fully locked into position. The front of the ferrule will need to be 3mm back from the front edge of the dies. This will guarantee that a full concentric swage is applied. Wait until the swage stops. Then using a vernier gauge on the OD of the ferrule, check that the hose is correctly finished. When measuring this, ensure that the tips of the vernier are inside the ridges of the ferrule or you will get a false reading. Should you be swaging a straight hose fitting, you can then use a no-go gauge to check for an internal collapse of 10 thou. And blow the assembly through to remove any potential contaminants created from the swaging process. Then, using a plug or cap to seal both ends to prevent further contamination before the unit is fitted. The label should state where and when the hose was made for traceability purposes and also can be used for other information such as customer part numbers. 